Today we are going to be looking at the arguments for and against reopening the economy. Let's jump into it. First, let's look at the argument against opening up the U.S. economy. For comparison, this first graph shows what the pandemic would have looked like had we done nothing. The blue line shows total COVID-19 infections at any point in time. And you can see the total infections and the impact on hospitals in the table at the right. Sim Pandemic simulates a population of 100,000 individuals. So to extrapolate these numbers for the entire US, you would multiply them by 3,300. In this next graph, we show the results of relatively strong social distancing like we have had in place for mid-March through mid-May, depending on the state you live in. The curve has been flattened a lot. The important point in this graph, the orange line showing cumulative individuals with immunity, is at best in the neighborhood of 20%. While that number is still being researched, it appears that there are nowhere near enough immune individuals to prevent a second outbreak. If we entirely stop our interventions and do nothing, a second spike will occur as shown in this graph, a powerful argument that we cannot simply go back to normal. Before looking at the argument for opening up the U.S. economy, let's do a deeper examination of the early days of the pandemic. We've zoomed in horizontally by running the simulation for just six months, and we can also zoom in vertically by clicking the zoom button. Now, if we hover over the graph with the mouse, we can read out the actual values for day 50 or so, late February in the United States. The CDC's development of a test had failed, so there was very little testing for COVID-19 available. Instead, we were relying on hospitalizations to measure the impact. And no one had shared with us the knowledge of how many cases are asymptomatic. So there was a huge reservoir of infected individuals we were not aware of. When we see our first deaths in February, unbeknownst to us, there are thousands more who are infected. The case for reopening the economy relies on this greater knowledge about the virus and vastly improved testing capability that enables us to measure how well we're doing. We can see any surges in the rate of infection and do something about it if they occur. In this graph, we're again looking at the situation in early May with strong social distancing. It's at the 70% effectiveness setting in sim pandemic. Not perfect, but pretty strong. We don't want to go here with no interventions at all, with social distancing set at 0% after day 145. What if we relax social distancing? Let's try 10% effectiveness starting on day 146. The peak shrinks a little. 20%? Notice how the second peak gets smaller and moves further out in time, but still not quite enough. 35%. Now it's looking pretty good. Let's add some PPE, like masks that are only 20% effective. That does the trick. There is a small ongoing rate of infection, but the situation is under control. Notice that our interventions don't need to be perfect, just good enough. And we know that if infections start heading in an upward direction, widespread testing will catch the change early. Importantly, our economy is in much better shape than if we continue strong social distancing with a higher level of business closures. 